Okay, we're going to be taking a look at Raiders of the Deep, U-Boats of the Great War. But before we do that, I should explain that this is part of a series of games, all designed by Gregory Smith, except for one. We'll get to that in a moment. Now, the first one in the series was The Hunters, German U-Boats at War, 1939. came out in 2013 from the Consim Press. It was followed three years later by Silent Victory, it's all about U.S. submarines in the Pacific, 2016. And more recently, we've had The Hunted, which is the Twilight of the U-Boats, 1943, and Beneath the Bed, which is the Regia Marina at Sea, the Italian Navy. So the odd man out in the series is this one, Raiders of the Deep. Following the same line as the others, it was designed by Ian Cooper. Now, Ian first offered the game uh, really for free on Board Game Geek, and um, in 2018, Compass Games picked it up, and I'm very glad they did, because this is one fine game. So we have an unusual history with this series. We've got uh, five titles in the series, done by, what, three different publishers, because these three were Consim Press, Beneath the Med is GMT, and the fourth here is Compass Games. But I should explain that they all use common rules, and they're completely homogenous. The uh, playing aid charts, the rules, they've all been made to look very much alike. So let's take a look at Raiders of the Deep. Now the footprint for this game is very small, fortunately. That is, it doesn't take up a lot of space. In the end, you're going to be playing on one of these U-boat mats and you're going to have this mat here to do the tactical attacks. You have a whole series of charts, which I'll show you. But when you're playing the game, this is all the space it takes. You don't even need these cards here. That's all you need. That's the essence of the game. Now, all of these games were designed as solitaire games. In theory, you could play them two players, but they're really designed from the ground up as solitaire games. Now, I'm not going to follow my usual procedure of showing you all the game parts and explaining how the game works. Uh, other people have done some very good uh, videos on that, so I don't want to repeat uh, what they've done. Suffice to say that you more or less pick the type of U-boat you want to command, and you get a whole host of U-boat uh, cards. Very colorful, really cool. They're double-sided. So you've got all kinds of U-boats. Now World War I had some special characteristics and problems that U-boats of World War II did not have. They also had some advantages too. You have to remember that in World War I, this is in the days before sonar was even invented. And the depth charge was only just, I think, invented in 1916. It was not available in mass production until after that. So U-boat warfare in World War I is quite different. The rest of the game is all these charts. Encounter charts, the types of ships you're going to uh, encounter, combat charts, names of ships. There is a mine of information on these charts. The essence of the game is in these charts. The rules themselves are about 15, 16 pages to learn. And they're well done. And like I said, they're very homogenous with the others in the series. If you've played one of the games in the series, you already know really how to play play these games. Now this is the U-Boat and Target roster. And the rules, I'll show you those. Not your rules here. For those of you who have other titles in the series, they will look certainly familiar. How to use the mats. And like I said, they're very homogenous. If you know how to play one of the games, you kind of know how to play the rest. They have their little minor variations, of course. But what I'm going to do in this game is just we're going to follow a patrol. Um, I could mention these cards. They're more for historical interest than anything else. You don't actually use them in the game. They give you the careers of some of the famous U-boat uh, uh, commanders. The top U-boat ace of all time was this fellow... Lothar von Arnaud de la Perriere, and uh, he got quite a score up in his tonnage, 
And the remarkable thing is that he got most of his tonnage by using a surface gun, not torpedo. And he followed all the rules, the prize rules, which is rather remarkable. You can take on him if you like, and uh, any of these other commanders, or just make up your own. The game is totally wide open that way. So what we're going to do in this video, and it'll be a bit of a stop and go, I'm just going to go on a typical patrol, the U-boat that uh, I've picked here. I chose this SMU-5, which is a little wee thing, very small. I just recently watched the movie The Spy in Black, and I believe that's the U-boat that was in the movie. So I'm going to do a patrol with this guy. And I'll do the patrol honestly. We'll roll a dice, see what I encounter. And just like in real life, some of your U-boats uh, may not encounter a darn thing. Very boring patrol, go out, see nothing, come home. That can happen in this game. But what's fascinating about the game is that it's the narrative you build. You tell a story, and I think that's kind of why I like the game. Now, I'm not a great fan of solitaire games, actually. I, I, don't, I have very few. I'm just not into solitaire games. But this series, for me, is the exception. It's so engaging, I really like it. The counters, there's, uh, there are mainly markers, of course. Your torpedoes, your damage counters, your commanders, and events. So, again, the footprint of the game is very small. So without further ado, let's um, set up the mat and go out on our first patrol. Now, when you start the game, you can pick any number of a whole host of actual historical U-boat commanders. And I've decided to do the Austro-Hungarian uh, front. And I've rolled, and the captain I have will be this fellow, Rudolf Prezil. You just record that on your patrol log, and he's going to start off as a Lieutenant Zuzi. And I'm going to start the patrol in August of 18, uh, 1914. So, um, the Austro-Hungarians, their only patrols are in the Adriatic, so that's where our patrol will be. And I'll put the markers on the board, and we'll start the patrol. Okay, the Type SMU-5 is a small little guy, doesn't carry a lot, so I've chosen to carry the C-35-91 torpedoes. You put them in your tubes, and they only have two reloads, so I chose a C-35 and a CO-6 steam torpedo. So that's the load of this particular submarine. We also put on our deck gun ammo. In other boats you'd put a certain number of markers. This particular one says unlimited, but I'll just put a marker down there to remind me that I do have ammo. And we're all set up for the game. You're going to put your hull and flooding damage markers off to the side. They won't actually be on the damage chart yet. Okay, then you put your U-boat marker in port, and you put your trained crew up here, and with that, you're ready to go. Now, I'll try to explain the game as we go, but it's pretty simple. It's really rolling charts to see what occurs. There is decision-making, and that will occur when we sight something. But we start the patrol by putting the submarine in the first transit box. So it's transiting to its destination in the Adriatic. Now historically that would be here. The U-boat would have been here at uh, Pola. It would go out into the Adriatic to um, target enemy vessels. That's what we're doing. So, without further ado, we roll a die and see if we encounter anything. Now we have a note here that the particular U-boat that I've chosen is uh, prone to um, mechanical breakdowns. And before each encounter, if we even have one, you have to roll a die to see if the submarine breaks down. So we have to be cognizant of that. Okay, so we're going to be rolling on this encounter chart here, which is used for Austrian campaigns August of 1914, which is where we are. So for all intents and purposes, only a 2 or a 12 will do anything. So we roll, and you get a 9. So nothing happens. What you do then is move your marker to the next transit box. You're transiting. Okay, we roll again. You got a 3 again. 
nothing happens. You now enter the Adriatic box. So now that we're on patrol in the Adriatic, you'll be switching uh, targets here. You'll be looking at this chart, Mediterranean Adriatic. Now a 711 will cause an encounter. We roll. We have a three. No encounter. Therefore, we move the U-boat. Again, one box. Again, we roll for an encounter. We have a seven. All right. So that means ship. So we've encountered something. How does that work? Let's see how it works. Okay, we've encountered a single ship, so you're going to roll a die. One through five, you've encountered a small freighter. Six, a large freighter. We roll, and we've encountered a small freighter. From there, you're going to go look up on charts in this U-Boats and Target roster for a small freighter, and roll for that. So here we're looking at the small freighter target roster. And we're going to be rolling 1d6. And as you can see that there's some danger in here, depending on what you roll. So let's see what we've encountered. We rolled a 6. That's not too good. Because we've encountered the HMS Pathfinder, which is an escort, and is a threat. The 2900, I'm guessing, is probably the tonnage. But I'll look that up and we'll see how this encounter goes. Okay, I've rolled on the target roster and the small freighter roster. So we have encountered the HMS Pathfinder, an escort, and a freighter called the Hallamshire, which is 4,400 tons. So, how do we attack this? Okay, now we get into the nitty-gritty of the attack. First of all, we have to roll to see if it's day or night. We roll the die and it's a daylight attack. So you put your little daylight marker there, show that you've got an escort, and you can put your small freighter as the target. Okay, now we do have an option. We're tracking this target, and we've seen the Pathfinder, but should we try to attack in daylight or wait till night? I'm going to play it conservatively and try to wait till night. So what you do is you have to roll a die again. One through four, it's a night attack. We've rolled a four, so we're fortunate. We waited till nightfall and we're stable, able to track them. So we change this to night. Nope, that's incorrect. You uh, go to step five, which is you select submerged attack or night surface attack. Um, I'm going to be really conservative and try a submerged attack at night. Then you assign torpedoes to the ship targets. Well, I only have two torpedoes. So I'm going to assign both of my torpedoes to the small freighter. And you put them on your little chart here. Like that. Two torpedoes assigned to the small freighter. So I'm not going to even try to take on the escort. I think that would be kind of madness. Now this is the part of the game we all like. We're going to check for hits by checking on chart U1 and U2 and damage on U3. So again, let's leap to the charts and see what we've got. Okay, because I was very conservative, checking this chart, I'll only hit on a 0 to 6, rolling two 6-siders. So this is not a great attack. Now, there's only one modifier, minus 1, for at night. So I'll roll two torpedo attacks against the small freighter. Again, not too good chance of hitting. But here we go. Rolled a nine, which is a miss. And second torpedo is a 10, which is also a miss. So poor old SMU-5 fails in its first attack. Of course, you remove these two torpedoes and that's the extent of the attack. Now we have to risk detection by the escort on this E2 chart. And I'll check the modifiers and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, we have one modifier on our uh, behalf and that's because we were firing at long range. So it's negative one. So we roll the die 
and he rolls an 11, which is just crap for us. 11 down to 10, we are detected. This may not end well. Let's see what happens. Okay, this is not good. So the escort is against our little wee SMU5, and we're going to be rolling on the unenviable table, the escort air attack chart. Let me just check the modifiers. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Um, no real modifiers. So as the U-boat, we want the uh, escort commander to uh, roll <laughs> very, very low. Let's see what he gets. He rolls an 8, which is two hits. This is not good. I'm not sure what marker you're supposed to use to record hits until you actually see where the hits are located. So I'm just using this little X marker to remind myself that they've got two hits. Okay, here's another chart that every U-boat commander should be afraid of. We're going to roll two D6s to uh, see what the result of those hits are. So, let's roll. We have an 11, which is the batteries. And the other one is a 10. Uh, whoops. Yeah, it's a 10. How can you roll a 10? Oh, I see, I was reading it wrong. You're to roll uh, it as a two-digit number. So I'll re-roll again. So the black being the first digit. So we roll a 14, and that's periscope. That's not going to be good. And then we're going to roll a 46, which is minor damage. So we'll mark that on our U-boat mat. Okay, for our four periscope damage, we have to roll again to see if it can be fixed or is inoperable. We roll the die. We roll the one. Thank goodness it can be fixed. Okay, we're rolling for our transit box to go home. And we roll a nine, which is no effect. And then we go to the next transit box. We roll a seven, which is no effect. And we are back in port for a refit. Now here, depending on what scenario you're in, what time of year, what kind of damage you've taken, the boat would be refitted with a certain amount of time passing by, at least one month, and uh, you'd go out on your next patrol. So that's an example of a simple patrol of how the game works. Now looking at it you might say, well, you know, that looks like a not full dull game, um, but it's not, depending on how many patrols you go on. The excitement is doing repeated patrols, going out again, seeing what you see, what damage you um, uh, receive, what ships have you sunk. That's the exciting part of the game, the narrative, not the actual minutia of moving the U-boat in the patrol areas, but well, that can be exciting too. It's the um, decision making, and um, I don't know. This is the kind of game I would love to see as a tournament game at WBC, but um, uh, well, WBC was canceled this year, and um, if the U.S. doesn't get their COVID cases down, I would say that WBC could even be canceled next year. I don't know. Sure, hope not. Um, and the whole history of the country, Canada and the United States. The border has never been closed for this long a period. We're talking nine months now. So in this, um, seven months, in, in this world of COVID-19, things aren't going too well. But hopefully we'll rally and uh, WBC will occur again. And I think this would be a fine tournament to do, much like the B-17 Flying Fortress tournament. You could have a whole bunch of people playing certain patrols, comparing notes. I think there's a great potential there. So that's it for Raiders of the Deep. I've probably not done this game justice, but I can assure you it is a, a very good game. I also decided to pick up the other title, Beneath the Med, because uh, no, I want to study the Italian Navy and see what they could do. I've done a lot of studying of the battles in the North Atlantic, and uh, I don't know, I'm not a collector. I don't feel I have to have every single title in the series. But like I said, there are five titles in the series, and any one of them um, I'm sure you'll probably like. But um, that's it for Raiders of the Deep, and uh, 
Thank you for watching.